Hi and welcome back to a new video. Last week I was visiting Asus HQ in Taiwan and I was discussing the Nitro Path memory feature with them. This was already released and announced during a previous Gamescom in August. I was hosting a live stream at least for my German YouTube channel. I was discussing it briefly there and at that point I wasn't sure if that's just the typical marketing blah blah or if it's actually doing something. Asus was advertising that it allows to increase your memory speed by about 400 megaturns first. And yeah, so discussing this with the engineers, it was much more technically interesting than I initially thought. And we will look at this in today's video. Are you looking for a strong and reliable hosting partner? Then Hetzner is the right place for you. As a leading hosting provider with their own high-tech data center, Hetzner offers GDPR compliant hosting at incredibly low prices. Hetzner operates several hundred thousand servers at multiple locations in Europe and the USA and most recently also in Singapore. Hetzner products impress above all with their outstanding price performance ratio. The secret behind this, simple and functional solutions, a focus on core features and a constant optimization. Click on the link in the description and discover more about Hetzner. This slide was used by Asus to advertise this during Gamescom. On the left side you can see a conventional memory slot. Everything you have currently at home is using exactly this technology. And on the right side you can see the Nitro Path memory slot with those like bent contact pins that then make contact with the memory slot in the middle. Last week we were using an let me phrase it, upcoming motherboard that only has two DIMM slots and it's focused on memory overclocking, so I'm not getting into trouble. And this motherboard, the upcoming one for Intel, didn't have the NitroPath feature, which they didn't make sense to me. Because I thought this NitroPath feature, like new memory DIMM slots, would enhance memory overclocking. So why would an upcoming memory focused overclocking board not have it? Like this one, the X870E Hero for DIMM board, for AMD, and AMD is typically not running such a high memory speed, has it. But then the Intel board didn't have it. That was quite odd. Then I asked the R&D team what the reason for this is. And then they set up two comparison platforms. So they brought two X870A gaming Wi-Fi motherboards, which are like mid-range, and four DIMM motherboards. They had one with con conventional memory slots and one with the Nitro Path memory slots. The first setup was with an AMD 8700G because those APUs can currently run higher memory speeds than for example Ryzen 9000. And the, on the conventional motherboard it was maxing out at 8200 me mega transfers. So at that speed you could still boot but in Windows in mem test you would get errors. And then they swapped the same CPU, same memory DIMMs onto the Nitro Path motherboard and 8600 mega transfers would run memtest stable. So that was again the moment when I asked myself, okay, that's cool, but why is it again not on the upcoming uh, two DIMM motherboard that is focused on memory overclocking? And that's because I had a wrong perception of what this feature actually does. When it comes to the memory layout, most of the motherboards these days are working exactly the same. So the desktop CPUs usually have two memory channels, that is channel A and channel B. That's also why you can find this label on here, like DIMM A1, A2, B1 and B2. And two of the channels are always daisy chained because it only has two channels, then the first two slots are going to one channel and then the B slots are going to the second channel. And that's why when you occupy A2 and B2, you always see this running in dual channel mode. And now if you occupy this with two memory dims, like right here, you still have the two empty slots and these are still electrically connected to the CPU and there are still signals arriving. So there's like no electrical switch in between that if you don't plug anything, that they're like that, that's not the case. When this Nitro Path feature was announced, I just thought, okay, it's like a different mechanical mechanism of how the contact pins are making contact with the DIMM itself. And because this is also like having a little bit higher mounting pressure than a conventional DIMM slot, that this is the real benefit. But that's actually not the case. It was just about the empty slots, not about the occupied slots, which is what I had like completely wrong. If you want to measure the signal quality of such a memory slot, for example, you can do that with an eye chart. If you look at the binary signal, it's in the original form like a rectangle shape, but if it's very high speed, like here between, let's say, 3000 and 500 megahertz, it becomes much more like sinus, 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 sinus shaped, and that's because of a lot of interference and things in between. And with an eye chart, you can identify if the signal is still clean enough 
or if it's already overlapping and you will get some errors. This is one of the charts where you can see it with the blue and green lines. We can also see state 0 and state 1, like 0 at 0 volt and then 1 at 0.4 volt. And due to this very high clock, you can see that this is no longer the typical rectangle theoretical form, but like a sinus shape because of the high speed. And in between there is this hole and that's what they call the eye marked in red. And depending on the size of this eye that is determined in picoseconds, that is the time, and the height in millivolt, so the voltage, you can determine how good the signal quality is. So the bigger the eye the better because you won't have overlapping signals. This example we're looking at right now was also provided by ASUS. And this is running with 6400 megatransfers, which equals 3200 megahertz. We can see on the left side config 1, which is testing the A2 memory slot, and config 2 on the bottom is testing the B2 memory slot. On the right, the old connector is the conventional memory slot, and the new connector on the right is the NitroPath memory slot. But here, in this scenario with 64 megatransfers, which is 3200 megahertz, there is little to no difference. So at this state, at this speed, it's not really relevant. That's why we're now switching over to 5000 megahertz equaling 10,000 megatransfers. And here it looks quite a bit different. The traditional memory slot doesn't have this eye anymore in the center. So you will have some memory interference, some overlapping signals, which will lead to errors or even that you're not even possible or not even able to boot this kind of speed. Then again, on the right side with the nitro path slot, you can see a significant difference. The eye became a lot smaller compared to the previous example with 6400 megatransfers, but it's still visible. And that's, I'm not sure if this state is like usable with the 10,000 megatransfers, but you can at least see, see a clear physical difference between the two slots. Now going back to the beginning, because I originally thought that those different memory slots will help because they have like different shape and make better electrical contact with the modules, for example. But that is not the case. It's about the empty memory slots. Each of the memory slots contains 288 pins. That was the same for DDR4, it's still the same for DDR5, just with the fact that now we're just approaching very high speeds, let's say with 10,000 megatransfers uh, approaching with DDR5, that is just very, very high a frequency and will need very good signaling quality. And each of these pins that are standing out from the memory slots, they also act like an antenna, especially the non-occupied slots. So every non-occupied slot is interfering with the occupied slot right next to it. So the higher you go in frequency, the more relevant this problem becomes that those empty slots and the empty pins act like as an antenna and have bad signal impact on the memory dim right next to it. Now, ASUS did a lot of testing about this and they had some very cool images, which they also gave to me. What they did was making PCBs with memory slots sitting on top, also with memory dims inserted. Then they put everything into epoxy, hardened it, then they cut through it, sanded, polished everything, so you can get a very nice cross section to see how this looks in reality. The left image now shows the cross section of a conventional memory slot where there is no memory module installed yet. The dark area is the plastic of the socket and in the center you can see the contact pin that also has this rounded shape that then eventually makes contact with the memory dim itself. That's what you can see on the right image. So that is also again a conventional slot but just with the memory module installed that you can see in the center has a quite thick PCB. And you can also see that it's a multi-layer PCB and has this uh, copper contact on left and right, which forms contact with the pins of the memory module, which are forced out a little bit to left and right because the module was inserted. Now switching over to the NitroPath memory slot. Left side again without memory module and on the right side with the module inserted. Now that's quite interesting because this is a little bit different to what they showed in the original marketing slides. Could be that this was some kind of technically like more relevant and probably important feature that they wanted to hide a little bit. So thanks for providing those cross sections anyway. You can see that it was bent down. It is a lot shorter than the conventional slot by about 40%. And only this like bent section is then making contact with the memory dim itself. So to recap this, it's mainly a feature that helps on the empty dim slot and not on the occupied one. And that's also why you probably won't find this on like an MSI Unify X or like an Asus Apex motherboard because it doesn't really help if it's just a two dim motherboard. That's why I was just completely wrong. 
We recently covered something similar in a video where I was talking about that the guaranteed memory speed, for example, advertised by Intel, doesn't depend on your actual memory configuration, but rather the motherboard configuration. They were listing, for example, I think 14th gen was 5600 megatransfers, and that is only for a 2D motherboard, like an Apex. But whenever you use something like a Hero or Extreme, which has four, four slots, then like officially it was something like 3600 or like 4200, like bizarre low. And I was wondering if that's correct, but it's indeed correct because it's mainly the motherboard that is causing trouble to how high you can clock your memory rather than the actual memory configuration. That's why, yeah, if you are targeting or if you're looking for very high memory speed, then like a 2D motherboard will always be the way to go. The cool thing is also that this won't stay an ASUS exclusive feature. If I understood it correctly, they developed it together with the slot manufacturer. I think it was Lotus and now it will be exclusive for ASUS for like a year and afterwards it's going to be an open standard and everybody can make use of that. So I'm pretty sure we will also find it on like MSI, Gigabyte or like an ASRock motherboard and that should definitely help memory clocking in the future. But yeah, I just wanted to cover this because I, I underestimated how yeah, problematic just the empty memory slot could be. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.